Hello and welcome to the inaugural D9 Sports Explore Clarion District 9 Basketball Playoff Preview Show. I'm Rich Rhodes. To my right is Andy Close. To my left is Chris Rossetti. Uh, this is the first time, obviously, we've done this, guys, and we're looking forward to a long show here of plenty of basketball talk on who the teams are to beat in the playoffs. First, before we get to the preview, uh, let's, let's talk about our, uh, our, our sponsorships for tonight. Laurel Eye Clinic, Swift Kennedy, The Roadhouse, All-American HQ, Bauer Truck Repair, The Carpet Barn, and Vinyl Graphics. Three classifications, boys and girls. Let's get right to it, guys. Uh, first, uh, class triple A girls, and uh, it's a small bracket. Of course, our big school classifications always have a small bracket. Uh, Andy, what's your take here right off the bat with triple A girls? You've covered well, the top seed I'll, all year. I'll, I'll tell you what, and you know, Bradford coach Ann Nuzzo might hate me for saying this, but this is the one classification, boys or girls, where I think there's a really clear-cut favorite. To me, Bradford is deep, talented, experienced. They are the team to beat in this field. Andy, considering the loss to Elk County Catholic last week for Bradford, do you think that helps them in a situation like this? I think it absolutely helps them. I think this is a group that took that loss very hard, and you'd rather have that before the playoffs start, obviously, than during the playoffs. But this, I think it was a real wake-up call for this team that was just kind of rolling along, 15 straight wins, and all of a sudden Elk comes in and kind of it was down at Elk, and I'll give them credit, they played a good game, but I think it really re I don't want to say re energized, but re motivated this Bradford team. And, and they're a group of girls that is going to take any loss for, and I think that really woke them up. A very star laden uh, team there. Casera Owens over 17 points a game, Ali Rinfred 15 points a game. Really, it starts and ends with those two offensively for them, but they have some other players, don't they? Mm -hmm. The Vanelli sisters, Alex and Haley. Alex can really stretch a defense, great mid range game, good mid range jump shot. And Haley, well, I think, doesn't get nearly the credit she deserves. The, the tallest starter on that team at 5'7 really plays bigger than that underneath. Alex does as well, but both of the Vanelli sisters, as well as Peyton Ambrose there, underneath do a great job for such an undersized squad. Andy, we, uh, we might have talked about this last year. You know, we didn't have a show. We talked about how the schedule uh, might have hurt Bradford. They've upgraded a little bit this year. Do you see any advantage that they might have gained this year by maybe a different, little different schedule, adding a couple teams? Absolutely, Rich. I think you look, they played uh, Mercyhurst Prep, a perennial state power early in the season, actually one of their two losses this year. They went up to the uh, Ibo Holiday Tournament in Olean and played a couple of very good teams in Jamestown. And uh, I'm drawing a blank at the moment, Olean. But uh, Allie Rinfret and Cassara Owens both played terrific in that tournament. Allie Rinfret, 30 points in that game against Jamestown, the finals, the MVP of that tournament. And I think that really, the argument was last year, okay, they went undefeated, but who did they play? I think this year, even though they're not undefeated, they have a couple of losses, but this team is just as good, if not better. Hmm. Oh, Chris, I was going to ask you, uh, who's going to play Bradford? What's your read on that semifinal game? St. Mary's, Punxsy. Even though St. Mary's is the higher seed, Punxsy beat them twice during the regular season. Well, I think that's a toss-up game. Uh, you know, you look at, at Punxsy, I think they like to shoot the three a little bit more than St. Mary's does. A very dangerous team in, in that regard. St. Mary's, on the other hand, probably has the best player in that game in Adair Gennacro, uh, you know, one of your favorite players, where it's just yes, an all-around sure. great athlete going Louisville to run cross-country. So you, Division One athlete, not in basketball, but in cross-country. And, and it, trash, she, yeah. she, you know, she's a thousand-point scorer. She averages over 13 points a game. To me, the, the real key there could be for St. Mary's is uh, Kiana Hohoholi, who has come on a little bit down the stretch for them. Yeah, and, and, and I've got a chance to see, I, I had a chance to see both teams, Punxy a little bit more, uh, very defensive-oriented team, a young team. Uh, most of these girls are going to be back next year. Head coach Randy Wrights has them playing hard defense. Uh, if they shoot the ball well, look out, because they're going to create some turnovers. They're going to, you know, he, he goes deep enough in the bench. Fouls aren't necessarily going to hurt them. That's part of their, you know, kind of part of their calling card, playing hard defense. If you look down to the district's top 30 scorers, there's no punksy score. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're not a dangerous team. So, uh, you know, I think either team there – you know, could get there. And you're talking about a Punxsy team. I saw them play Bradford last week, and a couple of girls, Alyssa Reitz and Taylor Newcomb, can really shoot the basketball. So before we say they don't have any, you know, no one in the top 30 scoring, which they don't, they get it done from a lot of different sources. And Punxsy, funny enough, beat St. Mary's twice during the season, but I think St. Mary's actually matches up a little bit better with Bradford. 
their guard, you know, Janakra, who, who, who we can really, I think, you know, they're not the, they don't have quite the star power that Rin, Fred, and Owens may have, but, you know, you saw that early in the season. They gave them some problems. Uh, yeah, so uh, the champ, the winner of the St. Mary's Punxsy game will play Bradford in the finals. I think uh, we're thinking March 2nd will be that. Um, the thing about this year, uh, only the champ, only a champion, right, Chris? Correct. Only the champion advances to the state playoffs. So it's winner take all, high stakes there in the finals. Only one goes, as in the past, uh, two go. After this break, we'll talk about Triple A boys. Laurel. Two of our sponsors of tonight of today's show is uh, Laurel Eye Clinic. Laurel Eye Clinic is a proud sponsor of District 9 Athletics with 11 offices, many of which are in the District 9 area. Laurel Eye Clinic is a full-service provider. That's Laurel Eye Clinic, a better vision for you. And Bauer Truck Repair, located on Route 66, just one mile north of Interstate 80 in Shippenville. Offers heavy-duty truck repair, towing and recovery, roadside service, truck and trailer parts, and more. Bauer Truck Repair is a proud member of the HDA Truck Pride Truck Service Experts Program. For more information, call 814-226-6023 or visit www.bauertruckrepair.com. Welcome back. Now it's time for AAA boys, an even smaller field than the girls, only two teams, Punxsutawney and Bradford. Bradford, uh, if the seedings matter, Punxsy is actually the higher seed. Even uh, The teams split their regular seeding me uh, season meetings. And Andy, you got a chance to see one of the best games of the year in Bradford, mm -hmm. uh, a double overtime win for the Owls. How does that play into this one? Now, Punxsy just got uh, Bradford back on their own home court on Friday night. How's this set up for a district final, which you know, it's going to take them forever to meet again here. We have a couple of weeks, and so March 2nd will be their uh, most likely uh, championship uh, matchup. What did you get from the one you saw? Well, I'll tell you what. These are two teams that could not be more evenly matched. You alluded to the first game. Mike Wilbur hits a 30-foot shot to send the game to overtime, and then Bradford ends up winning in double overtime. And then the game this past week where Bradford actually had an 11-point lead, Punxsy comes back and beats them. We talk about two teams that are very defensive-oriented. I know people in Bradford probably get sick of me talking about this isn't a team that's going to wow you with offensive talent. But as with any, you know, Brian Hobbs coach team, you know, his third year now, one thing has become abundantly clear. His teams will play defense. Uh, they're giving up less than 45 points per game in the second half of the season. And that's going to be their calling card. If they want to beat Punxsy, you know, just like they did the first time, you know, double overtime, but the game was still only in the 50s. Chris, you remember last year's district final. We're going to see another 35-34, 39-38 th game. Uh, very defensive oriented. It very well could be. Uh, you know, the one key, I think, would be whether Brandon Mancuso for Punxsutawney can find a way to defeat that defense or not. Uh, to me, that's the real key for the Chucks is, is being able to get him going in that game. Mm -hmm. And if they do, then Bradford could be in a little bit of trouble because they have nobody that can score with him. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and to Bradford's credit, they've limited him. I think he's been in doubles both games, but no more than 12 or 13 points. So they, Bradford does a good job of taking the opposing team's top scorer and not taking him out of the game, but kind of limiting what he wants to do. And I think with Mancuso, like with any other player they're going up against, they'll have that in mind. I thought, Randy, the, the win for Punxsy down there on Friday was big going into the postseason. They had, it was a five-game winning streak, I think, for Bradford. Uh, Punxsy hasn't beaten Bradford in the postseason since 2000. Uh, some of that might not apply to new kids. I mean, they weren't playing in 2000. But that win Punks, the Punks got Friday might have maybe even this field even more, even though we thought it was an even field anyway. Well, I think Punksy felt, you know, hey, we have that game one up in Bradford, then Bradford, yeah. you know, forces overtime in that game. But it does, you know, until you actually beat a team, you might not believe you can beat them, even though you should have. And for Punksy, I think it really shows that, they, hey, you know, we can beat these guys. And... You know, a district championship on the line, you know, might be uh, obviously a totally different set of circumstances. But, you know, yeah, I think that does give a team confidence. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's our trip away. I, if, same as the girls, uh, in past years, in recent years, we've had the, the District 9 runner-up in trip away advance the states in a playing game. That no longer is there. Winner goes, loser goes home. Loser goes home, winner goes to state playoffs. It's now on to uh, uh, double A girls. Eight teams in this field, biggest field ever in the history of District 9, for those who care about history, uh, that would lend itself maybe to a deep field. Uh, Chris, what, what strikes you right now at this bracket? 
strikes me with this practice, I think uh, any one of seven of the eight teams probably look going in think that they can win the championship. Uh, nothing against eight seeded Kerwinsville, but I think that we saw in the AML playoffs that uh, they probably uh, would need a, a really strong performance to to win it. But I think the other the other seven teams, uh, throw them in a hat, pick them out on any given day. I think any one of them can beat any of the other ones. Uh, obviously, Kane is the is the top seed in that bracket. And, and deservably so. You know, they've been there a lot. Uh, they haven't been able to quite get over the hump there. They keep running into Cranberry uh, over the years or, or even Monata a couple times there. But uh, I think, you know, Kane's got a strong team with Kayla Jamerson. You look at second seed at Carn City, very young team down at Carn City, but uh, one where uh, they, they can make some noise. And, and then you look at third seed at Cranberry. Anytime you've got the district's leading scorer like they do in Emily Merriman at over 22 points a game, almost 23 points a game, obviously a threat. They also have Sunay Sward who's going Bucknell, so Division I prospect there. Uh, unfortunately for Cranberry, that's pretty much what they've got right now. They really need a third and a fourth player to step up. Julie Schwartzfager might be the key to Cranberry. If she can raise her game, which she has in the last week or so, uh, they could be the threat to, to defend their championship. And, and then that 4-5 matchup is very interesting. Red Bank Valley... Uh, against Monata last week, Red Bank Valley, I think it was two weeks ago, beat Monata by over 20, I think it was. Yet that game's down at Monata, and Monata, uh, very experienced team, a young team though, uh, not very many seniors on that team either. So in Red Bank Valley, obviously led by a freshman in Brooke Hinderleiter, the second leading scorer in District 9. Uh, two things hit me. Outside of Kane, not a whole lot of playoff experience here. And uh, the other thing is, is that they all have a player or two that could take you to the next level. I mean, you can speak more to Brookfield. You've seen them a lot. I'm going to defer that to you with Brookfield. Yeah, and I'll go to Andy first, and I'll follow up. Uh, Andy, Kane's a top seed. Nobody's been able to beat Cranberry forever. Uh, how do you size this up outside of those two teams? Is, is the title going to go to Kane or Cranberry? You know, on paper, it looks like, yes, Kane, uh, Kane has been the most consistent team in this field. But a team that I really like is Brookville, a, a Brookville team that, to be honest, didn't play their potential the first half of the season. But you look, especially the second half of their District 9 league schedule, it beat Elk County Catholic, beat Punxsy. Uh, you know, the Newsom sisters are a great guard team. And we talk about Carly Rensel. This is a team that I think could go on a Cinderella-type run in a wide-open bracket like this. No disrespect to Cranberry, who has that playoff experience, or Kane, who has been the most consistent team in this field. But this type of tournament in double A really lends itself to a dark horse coming through. Well I think we're not really giving much credence right now to the Clarion Lime Center and we should be because they've lost they, they play Cranberry in the first round. They've lost to Cranberry twice by two points both times. Uh, you know, you see a game that gets that close and that's a really intriguing first round matchup there. And you got player like a player like Keanu Lagan at C L who can take over a, a basketball game uh, once again, on the on the Cranberry side, you got Emily Merriman who can take over a game. Wonder how much the experience factor there between those two teams plays a factor in the playoffs. Yeah, and I, I had a chance uh, that, that uh, a very compelling game, uh, and I'll actually be at this game. Carn City Brookville. Brookville has to go back down to Carn City. They have played twice this year. Uh, the game at Carn City, Carn City, had a, Carn City had a big lead. Brookville came back, tied it. Might have even gone ahead. Carn City wins it right at the end on a, basically a buzzer beating layup. Uh, at Brookville, Carn City beats uh, Brookville by four. Uh, so both games are close. I think uh, uh, I think Brookville is confident they can beat Carn City. I think uh, I, I, I think that uh, that's the matchup that you know. Would you rather go to Carn City or Kane? I, I don't know, but uh, I, I think Brookville thinks a third time could be a charm for them. And the Newsoms, you know, the Newsoms and Ryan, so the, the senior trio is going to have to carry them. They have they've they've done that all year. Scoring wise, and if anybody else steps up, they have a good chance. Carn City, a young team, they're going to be around, Chris. We talked about that, and this could be a nice springboard for them for future years. Absolutely. Let's, let's touch on Red Bank again for a moment because we're talking about a team that is 13 and 9, didn't win a game last year. And you look at a freshman, Brooke Hinderleiter, averaging 20 points a game. Is there a player that's had more of an impact on their team than Brooke Hinderleiter? You know, you'd have to go back a, a long time to see a team that goes from nothing to, to a lot and, and to be even in yeah. the discussion for a district title just like that overnight. Um, mm -hmm. You know, North Clarion had a couple of girls teams there that, that went from two or three wins to 14, 15 wins a few years back. Uh, you know, St. Mary's, when uh, Kayla Hohoholi came on board, she had that kind of impact, probably even more so, on, on that team because she was... 
that they became the prohibitive favorites to win District 9 when she even came as a freshman. Uh, but, but no, and you're right. It, that is a, a great story. You know, the job that Robin Martin has done it, down there, you know, sure, they've got a player like Brooke Hinderleiter scoring 20 points a game, but it's a freshman scoring 20 points a game. There's a lot of having to massage that as a coach and, and being able to get a player like that to play to her potential on a daily basis and not have the ups and downs that a lot of freshmen have or finding a way to make sure that freshman doesn't hit a wall and she doesn't appear to have hit a wall either. I saw I, I saw Red Bank play uh, Brookville at Brookville. Very impressed with Hindu Lighter. She doesn't play like a freshman. She she's much more more mature. You can tell she's played a lot of basketball. The key for them, if, for any team, but a key for them in in the playoffs is somebody else has got to step up and help her. I know uh, the the Brookfield's guard defense, perimeter defense really wore down Red Bank as it went on. Now are those two teams going to play? That would be an amazing story yeah. if we saw Brookfield Certainly and Red Bank in opposite sides of the bracket. But that was just what I saw. Hindu a great great player. And uh, certainly, uh, Red Bank a turnaround season. Guys, uh, two teams actually clarify, Chris, on Double A girls. I think I might get confused here. Boys and girls are different. They are. Who goes to who goes to states? In Double A, they're taking two teams, and they both go into the Saturday or Friday bracket. The, right. There is no playing games anymore. So two teams in, and they're okay. just two teams that are automatically into the playoffs. They don't have to play a preliminary round game or anything like that. So right. in Double A girls, you've got two, and Double A boys. Because there's fewer District 9 teams, they only take one. Right, and we'll get to the boys here in a minute after this break. A couple more of our sponsors include uh, Swift Kennedy & Company is an independent property and casualty insurance agency located at 100 Meadow Lane in Dubois. Swift Kennedy has served the insurance needs of West Central PA since 1921, providing coverage to over 3,000 individuals and families and 1,300 businesses. Call 37, call for a free quote, Swift Kennedy is insurance with integrity. Another sponsor would be Vinyl Graphics, and Vinyl Graphics Unlimited, that is, of lo located on Route 322 in Shippenville, is the area's most technically advanced sign studio. They offer large format printing and lamination, interior and exterior signage, truck lettering, vehicle wraps, ADA signage, banners, job site signs, trade show graphics, screen printing, school spirit decals, and much more. For more information, call 814-226-7887 or visit www.vinylgraphicsunlimited.com. Our final sponsor here as we head into the AA Boys, uh, boys, sponsor, uh, boys, uh, boys Preview excuse me, is All-American HQ. All-American HQ has trophies, awards, plaques, and offers services like engraving, embroidery, screen printing, and much more. Stop and see All-American's new showroom at 511 Main Street in Chippenville. All-American HQ will put almost anything on almost everything. Now it's on to Double A boys and guys. Uh, Double A girls was the biggest field ever. Double A boys, it's never been this small. Three teams, Brockway the top seed. The Rovers get to play either Cranberry or Keystone in the district final. Chris, I, I love this semifinal game between Clarion and Keystone. To me, the, the, one of the best stories is one that's not being talked about a whole lot, and that's the coaching matchup. You have the veteran Greg Heath at Keystone. You've got the young and upcoming Patrick Irwin at Cranberry. What's so intriguing about that? Patrick Irwin not only played four years for Greg Heath at Keystone, his dad, Bill, was Greg's longtime assistant coach, like almost 20 years assistant coach. Uh, the Greg and Bill both still work at Keystone. Both eat lunch together on a daily basis. A uh, fantastic story. Y you know, y you look at a matchup and you're like, wow, Greg Heath coach is kind of like Aaron Stravidel, County Catholic. But, but boy, I I'm just wondering how much Greg Keith can trick Patrick Irwin or Bill Irwin at this point, or how much Bill will have conflicting emotions on, on, on how much maybe he'll be helping Patrick in this case, even though it's his son. Uh, obviously, a lot of uh, loyalties there to Keystone, too. He might want to just stay away from it, kind of like the Harbaugh family in the Super Bowl. Uh, while they might not be related, they may as well be related because of right. the closeness and what was going on here. And, and you watch Cranberry, and they do a lot of the same principal things that Keystone has done over the years. They're... You know, a lot of people make fun of sometimes the KSAC defense and teams don't play defense and, and so forth, but Cranberry is a sneakily good defensive team and Keystone is a very good defensive team. They practice defense probably more than they practice offense on a, on a daily basis. Uh, to me, the, the, the key here is what does Keystone do against Ryan Willison? Ryan Willison is a superstar. There's just no way about it. 25 points a game for the 
for the super berries, as they sometimes like to be called. And um, he, he's legit. He might be the best player in District 9 and a very strong field of great players. Uh, I, I really believe that if he was 6'2 instead of 5'8", five, 5'9", five, that he'd be a legitimate prospect getting legitimate looks because he can create his own shot. He can shoot the ball well. He's quick off the dribble. Uh, he's the total package. Um, Keystone, probably a little deeper in scoring with Tyler Beekner, uh, Adam Lenser for sure. And then sneakily, a guy like Colton Young, who had 20 in the one meeting between these teams earlier in the year, that Keystone really handled Cranberry in that one meeting, uh, knocking off the Berries. Uh, I think it was a, a close to a 20-point game, if not yeah, more. Yeah. And, and then they also held uh, Willis into 12 points, the second fewest point total this season. So very intriguing matchup there. And I actually believe... As much as Brockway's the top seed, the winner of the Cranberry Keystone game wins the district title um, in the end. Okay. I, I think Brockway um, hasn't played the type of schedule on a consistent basis that both Cranberry and Keystone have. I think they've, they've played bigger, more important games as the year's gone on. And you watch what happened to Brockway against Johnsonburg in the AML title game, only 22 points. They're a team that has trouble scoring at times. And I go back to the defense that both Cranberry and and Keystone play, and I think they're going to give Brockway some trouble there. Uh, Brockway, uh, by the way, the, the, you were right, Chris. 53-31 was the Keystone win over Cranberry. Uh, Andy, 14-7 and is what Brockway, uh, their record. Their, mm -hmm. se their seven losses are pretty good losses, and, mm -hmm. and their uh, two losses to Johnsonburg, two losses to Ridgeway, two to Elk, and they lost to Erie Central. Mm -hmm. Now, that's quality losses. That doesn't necessarily mean you're a great team, but we got to give them props. Brockway, uh, Brockway is a very... Uh, I got a chance to see them uh, during the tip-off tournament. They just ran everybody off the off the map on that at the Brookville tip-off tournament. But um, can this Rovers team, uh, you know, they, do they have a superstar? No. Clay Anderson, 13.5 points a game. I like Jake Perrin, who is a, a hustler out there. He's all over the place. He's second-leading rebounder, team leader in assists and steals. Uh, I, maybe are we selling them short? Chris, Chris might be very well right, but what about the Rivers? What, what do you get from your? No, I mean I don't think we're selling them short. I think you're looking at a team that's they had a nice season. They had Brockway's had a nice season. They had some quality wins, but you look at the, really the top tier competition that they've played against, and every time they've had that opportunity, whether it be Elk, whether it be Johnsonburg, whether it be Nonley against Erie Central, they've been handled in most of those games. And, and to me, I'd be a little more confident in picking them if they had at least been competitive in those games, but, you know, every time you look at that step up in competition, they haven't been quite ready to handle that yet, and that, that's what concerns me against either a Keystone or a Cranberry in a championship setting. And Brockway's only win against a team with a winning record, Cameron County, one point win. Uh, so, they're looking for, the, the Rovers are looking for their first title since 2009, that was a wide open field that year, might be the case this year, we'll, we'll see. The Laurel Eye Clinic. The Laurel Eye Clinic is a proud sponsor of District 9 Athletics with 11 offices, many of which are in the District 9 area. Laurel Eye Clinic is a full service provider. That's Laurel Eye Clinic, a better vision for you. Bauer Truck Repair, located on Route 66, just one mile north of Interstate 80 in Chippenville, offers heavy duty truck repair, towing and recovery, roadside service, truck and trailer parts, and more. Bauer Truck Repair is a proud member of the HDA Truck Pride Truck Service Experts Program. For more information, call 814-226-6023 or visit www.bauertruckrepair.com. Swift Kennedy. Swift Kennedy & Company is an independent property and casualty insurance agency located at 100 Meadow Lane in Dubois. Swift Kennedy has served the insurance needs of West Central Pennsylvania since 1921, providing coverage to over 3,000 individuals and families and 1,300 businesses. Call 371-1052 for a free quote. Swift Kennedy is insurance with integrity. Well, guys, it's time for Class A girls. 25 years ago, CL was a 10 seed and became the lowest seed to win the district, win a district title. It's not going to happen here because there's only eight teams. Just to set you up there, guys. <laughs> eight team bracket. Um, boy, I, I think this is a thinner field than in many years in Class A. Do you guys agree with that, Chris? I think it is, and especially with some of the injury situations that Keystone is facing right now. They would have been the prohibitive favorite, I think, and. 
them facing some of these injuries doesn't mean they can't win it. It just means that they come back to the rest of the pack. So is it thin? I don't know if it's so much thin as a lot like double A girls. There's a few teams in there, maybe up to six of them that could win the whole thing. Maybe seven of them actually. Andy, what do you think of that? I completely agree with that. You know, you look at the one through eight, it's not a deep field in terms of numbers, but in terms of talent, I think it's, and Chris touched on it, you know, Keystone, I think, was the team to beat coming in. But does that open the door for a Clarion who beat Keystone twice this season? A Port Allegheny who's won 17 in a row. So it, it raises a lot of interesting questions. Chris, uh, top seed Clarion, uh, they, they beat Keystone for the KSAC title uh, this past weekend. Talk about what that team brings as the top seed to this bracket. Well, it's a well-coached team, as most Roger Walters coach teams are. It's a team that's going to be scrappy, play hard, play well defensively. It's got some people that can score. Macy Thornton has stepped into the role that Bree Nellis held last year at point guard and has done a very good job uh, replacing Bree there. Kayla Miles is a player who can go off in any game and, and really be a difference maker there. Uh, and then you get to some of their secondary scorers like Mercy Crow and, and a few others like that. And it, uh, they, they're, they're a team that can score some points. And, and you see that. I think they're second or third in District 9 in scoring, yet they don't have anybody scoring more than 12 and a, and a half points a game because it can be a different player every year. Hannah Wolf has had some fantastic games for them inside. Uh, Ashley Hummel. Yeah, Ashley yeah. Hummel is, a, is another player. Who, who can do some things. So what makes them dangerous is you can't just plan on trying to stop one player because they have multiple players that can beat you. Well, let's talk. Yeah, we'll go while we're staying in the KSAC. Let's go down to the bottom bracket. Andy, we'll talk about those middle two games in a minute. Keystone, I tell you, the, the bad breaks with some injuries. Uh, as we said earlier, we maybe get into it a little bit here. The, their third seed, they're going to play Cowdersport in that 3-6 game. Uh, how good could have Lady Panthers have been, and how good are they now without uh, Morgan Johnson for sure? I think the Lady Panthers could have been good enough to make a serious run at Hershey in the state in the state finals if they had stayed healthy. To be truthful, when you look at Morgan Johnson and Madison Johnson, uh, Morgan's younger sister, and then Melinda Brosniak and what Courtney Greathouse has done this year, they were deep. They're talented, uh, the whole nine yards. And then it starts early though for the Madison Johnson. Partially tears her ACL, uh, has been playing through that injury all year, maybe tweaked that knee a little bit in the KSAC title game yesterday, Saturday, um, but she's been able to play through that. Then a couple weeks ago, her sister Morgan goes down with the same injury and hasn't been able to come back from it. And it just changes the entire complexion of this tournament because you're talking about a player who was, in my estimation, maybe the best player in District 9 all around in Morgan Johnson. And... Oh, you, D9, D9, or a Division One team. The one that yeah, yeah, Rhode Island. Rhode Island and, you know, another Division One prospect. And, and so, you know, you lose a player like that, and I don't care what your complimentary players are like, it's hard to replace something like that. Uh, let's talk about the middle of the bracket, Andy. The 4-5 mm -hmm. game is Elk County Catholic hosting Johnsonburg and Port Allegheny, the North Tier champion, taking on Venango Catholic. That 4-5 game, thoughts on that one? It's, you know, by mm -hmm. numbers, it means it's close. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've played, I believe, three times this year, Elk winning twice, Johnson Burke winning once. There's a bit split. Well, regardless, they're two very, very evenly matched teams. You talk about an Elk team, that, and it's funny, we talked about their win over Bradford earlier, and they had, they had struggled with a couple of losses up to that point. But as with any Ken Pisner coach team, you talked about Clarion being balanced. This Elk County Catholic team is very balanced, whether it's Taylor Decanile down low. Christy Haynes, Julie Sweeney. This team has a number of players who can beat you on any given night. And then you look at the Johnsonburg team, you know, with, with Chelsea Benson and Brittany Watts and the like, and they, their win against the Elk came early in the season. But I think a team that I saw against Bradford very early in the season, and they gave Bradford some trouble at times. And I think I realized at that point that that was a team that could make some noise in A this year. And that's that might be the most entertaining game of the first round of Class A girls. Yeah, now Port Allegheny, Andy, uh, it's, it wasn't the traditional Cowder's poor win. Port Allegheny ended a run uh, and won their first uh, North Tier title since when? And, and 19, 1999. Uh, Port Allegheny is a very good basketball team, as I mentioned. They won 17 in a row, and it starts inside with Becca Lathrop and Brooke Royce. 
Uh, you have a girl in Becca Lathrop who's been in double figure scoring every game this season. I believe average at a double double, if not close to it. And you know, Roy's her counter in the, in the middle, also very solid. And think about how team how good this team would have been with Rachel Taylor, who they lost for the season before the season even started down low as well. So you're talking about a team that was already without one of its best players and has still been able to do what they've done. And then you look at their guard play. It's really, I know Christina Francis, their coach, has been really pleased with how that's come along as this season has gone on. You have Krista Miller, Gabby Graber, Summer Buxton shots. You're talking about a team that's very solid, both offensively and defensively. Uh, Chris, where maybe this is getting into our prediction section, which is maybe later, but where do you see maybe a higher seed punching through to the semifinals and getting it, you know, getting a chance to go to states? Well, I think that you know when you look at a team like a Venango Catholic and uh, a team that didn't play junior varsity all year, they've basically run seven players out there. Uh, Lindsey Holman leads them, but they've they, they've got those seven are, are very solid players. Now the question becomes obviously depth. Uh, you know what happens in a game where maybe a team's pressing them. Um, plus they're playing in a really difficult. Division in that case at North. When you look at Clarion and CL and Cranberry, all in that division with Venango Catholic, they're getting tested more often than not. Probably more so than anybody else of the higher seeds. Um, and then I look at a Cameron County team with a Brooks Dunsmore. Clarion's coming off an emotional win over uh, Keystone in the case that title game, and you almost have to look at a game like that as being a potential trap game because everybody thinks they're going to win that game. But we've seen in girls, maybe even more so than boys. Teams come out and knock off high seeds that are coming off of emotional situations. I can think back to Dubois Central Catholic knocking off a right. Keystone team at, as a, at Keystone right. a few years back. Right. I can think of some other situations throughout the years where those type of things have happened. So, um, And then even Countersport Keystone is a very intriguing matchup to me. Jenna Gabrowski is a really good player for Countersport. There's a lot of tradition up there. You know those players want to continue that tradition. And we've talked about the injury situation that Keystone has faced. And, you know, you wonder how that eventually begins to wear on them. And could Countersport making that long trip coming down against the favorite Keystone team that has shown in the past to sometimes lose big games like this early in the playoffs? Could that be a, a situation too? So when you talk about that, I think any one of those – Lower seats could knock off of upper seat. Heck, all four of them could knock it off. It could be like an NHL type of scenario where you've got four, five through eight playing in the semifinals. You know, we've talked a little bit about the North Tier League girls. Maybe they're a little down, but you touched on Brooke Dunsmore, Cameron Town. You touched on Jenna Gabreski at Calder Sport, two of the better girls players in the district. And can they knock off a Clarion? Can Cameron knock off a Clarion? Can Cowie knock off a Keystone? I think it can happen. Well, we'll see. Uh, the quarterfinals are very important here. In Class A, four teams go to states. So the quarterfinal round winners go to the semifinals. Semifinals, four teams. There will be a consolation game with the semifinal losers to determine who finishes uh, third and fourth. After this break, we'll go to Class A boys. We'll have a lot of fun with that one. The inaugural D9 Sports Explore Clarion District 9 Basketball Playoff Preview Show is brought to you by Vinyl Graphics Unlimited. Vinyl Graphics Unlimited, located on Route 322 in Shippenville, is the area's most technically advanced sign studio. They offer large format printing and lamination, interior and exterior signage, truck lettering, vehicle wraps, ADA signage, banners, job site signs, trade show graphics, screen printing, school spirit decals, and much more. For more information, call 814-226-7887 or visit www.vinylgraphicsunlimited.com. And All-American HQ. All-American HQ has trophies, awards, plaques, and offers services like engraving, embroidery, screen printing, and much more. Stop and see All-American's new showroom at 511 Main Street in Chippenville. All-American HQ. We'll put almost anything on almost everything. Last but not least, it's Class A boys, annually a fun bracket to follow. 14 teams make up the bracket, and the one theme I get out of this, guys, is somebody good ain't going to states. Chris, how do you size this up in the years we've been following this? Is this the best bracket you've seen in Class A? Boy, it might be. Um, you know, everything from the top seed of North Clarion to 10th seed of Clarion Limestone to, you know, Johnsonburg, Ridgeway, Elk County Catholic, Smithport. Uh, you know, Smithport going down from double A AA to single A really strengthened this bracket this year. 
really made it uh, a, a tough bracket to decide. AC Valley's in there. Um, you know, I just I, I keep looking at it, and, and any one of those teams could make a run. And you're going to look at a situation already where the way the bracket sets up, Johnson Burger, Elk County Catholic, one of those two not going to the state playoffs. And that could be news because Elk County Catholic's gone 15 straight years. Did they make it 16? Last year we didn't think they were going to make it 15, and they did. Uh, you know, you look at a, a situation Ridgeway and AC Valley, both of those teams very well deserving of state playoff first. One of them is going to be sitting at home. Uh, you know, you even look at a, a ninth seed like Clarion, which could match up with top seed at North Clarion for a third time. And if they can find a way to beat Countersport at the A seed, and, you know, they, they could make a, a run yeah. in there too. Uh, the, the, the overriding theme is that teams all have, a lot of these teams have that one player who can take a team and upset another team with that player. Uh, whether it's R.J. Legan at CL, Roland Shannon House at Clarion, Zach Smith at Smithford, uh, and so on. They all have that one guy who could go off for 40 points on a given night and, and maybe beat a team that somebody didn't think they were going to beat. Let's, talk, let's start at the top of the bracket, and we'll work down through here. And Andy, uh, we'll, we'll have you talk about Smithport. But talking at the, starting at the top, Chris, you've seen North Clarion. They get a bye since there's 14, two team, 14 teams, Smithport, North Clarion. Smithport's one, Smithport's two. They get byes. North Clarion gets a bye. They play either Cowdersport, the eight seed, or Clarion, the nine seed. How good is this Wolves team? I mean, we, we, you fondly talk about the late 90s, early 2000s North Clarion's teams. Is it to that extent they're the top seed here? What do the Wolves bring to the table here? Well, the first thing they bring to the table is 22 straight wins. Uh, you can't sneeze at that. They lost their opening game and haven't lost since. Their last loss, December 7th. Uh, you know, a player like Mitch Obenrader, who was the D9Sports.com Rookie of the Year a couple years back, is a fantastic basketball player, can play both the guard and the forward positions, uh, can handle the basketball, but can also post up. Uh, you get a kid like Cal Howarth inside who... Uh, can rebound at 13, 14 rebounds a game. And then you've got the Cyphers. And by the Cyphers, I mean three of them. Evan, Joel, and Christian. All starting, all at guard. Mm -hmm. uh, Christian's probably the most talented of that group. They're young guards, too. Um, not one of them is a senior. And so very talented, very deep in terms of their starting five uh, ball club there in, in North Clarion. And I think very well coached. Uh, the 8-9 game, Andy. Cowdersport from up north. They finished third in the north tier behind behind uh, Smithport and Cameron County, mm -hmm. uh, they get to host Clarion. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the year we felt Cl Clarion was the better ball team. They've kind of slumped towards the end. Well, Chris will talk about Clarion in a minute. This Cowdersport team, mm -hmm. what can they do here at home in that, in that prelim round of game against the Bobcats? Well, the first thing that jumps out to you about Cowdersport is they're not, they're not gonna wow you with anything they do, but Brian McCusker does a great job with this group, and it starts with John Michael Regas on down. They're very well coached, a very, very good defensive ball club. And you look at, you know, they're going to need that against a kid like Roland Shannon House, who brings star power to the guard position for Clarion. But I, I think in this Cowder Sport team, I think we're selling them short a little bit. Uh, they played Ridgeway, you know, second to last game of the season. And that, that game was in doubt until the final minute. And Ridgeway, we've talked about as being one of the top teams in District 9 all season. So don't sleep on this Cowder Sport team, especially at home with Clarion having to make that two hour trip. Yeah, this is a game that could really go either way. Well, and San Shannon House has been an outstanding player in this district. Uh, he's a senior this year. Uh, it's good to have a player like that in the postseason. Is that going to be enough to get them past Cowderport to get a crack at North Clarion? Well, I think what Clarion needs is they're going to need that secondary scoring, the scoring from Antonio Therese, Cameron Kirkland, Ellis Painter, Richard Diamond. Those guys are going to need to step up and make them a little bit more of a balanced basketball team. But in the end, as Roland goes, Clarion usually goes. When they had their late season swoon, Roland wasn't scoring what Roland was scoring early in the year. And then when they kind of got out of it in the last couple of games, Roland started scoring again a little bit. And, and so I think Roland Shannon House is the key there. The other key is they've got to shoot well. They're not an inside team. They're going to be a they're very guard oriented, very outside shooting, very three point shooting. And that's where the long trip to Countersport could play a real key role is how are they coming off the bus after the two, two and a half hour bus trip? How do they adjust to that type of, of trip, which they haven't had to make all year? Um, you know, does it take their shooting legs out from under them? Does it take them a while to get warmed up? And if it does, then they're in trouble because they have to be able to shoot well to win. Uh, let's moving down. We'll go with the 4-13 matchup, and, and that's AC Valley versus 13-seeded Dubois Central Catholic. 
the winner of that game will play the 5-12 game, which would be Ridgeway and Oswego Valley. Ridgeway being the fifth seed, defending champions, Class A. Oswego Valley, the 12th seed. And if you do your math, that means the 4-5 game in the quarterfinals could be, well, would be if they see each other, AC Valley hosting Ridgeway. One of those two teams will go home. I've, seen, I get, I've had a chance to see Ridgeway this year. Massive favorites, uh, I, I believe, in that Oswego Valley game. Uh, AC Valley, Dubois Central Catholic, runners-up in the KSAC um, to, to, uh, to North Clarion. First, Andy, the, the ridgeway Oswego Valley game. Uh, the Elkers, uh, they want to get back to the finals. This isn't the same team as what we saw last year with Derek Matheson, but they have Jesse Reynolds and a lot. They're bigger. They're not quite as ball-handling oriented, but they still pose, a, obviously, a big threat to get to states. Mm -hmm. And Tony Ellick Road does such a great job with this program. The one thing that stuck out to me seeing Ridgeway this year, they're so fundamentally sound. They're a team, you're going to have to beat them because they're not going to beat themselves. And you look at a kid like Jesse Reynolds, obviously you, you lose Eric Matheson, the District 9 player of the year last year. I think Jesse's done a great job of kind of shouldering that scoring load that Eric had last year. And very solid underneath, too. You talk about a Sam Roselli, a Josh Mitchell. Uh, they're going to present a lot of problems, you know, not necessarily scoring, but rebounding and toughness underneath. And, and you, you talk about an Oswego Valley team, uh, obviously prohibited underdogs, uh, but Clark Cummings does a good job with that program. He really, um, you know, replacing all-time leading scorer Nick Goss this season, who's now at Pitt Bradford. You know, they got a couple nice players there. You have Spencer Howard, Grant Nolan at the guard position. I know Keegan Goodlitz, a kid who just came back, recently suffered a broken wrist. Uh, this is a team that can score. Uh, that 4-13 matchup, Chris, and we can talk a little about AC, about AC Valley. Very talented offensive team. The question is, can they score enough points or can they play, deep, you know, not keep that team down to put pressure on that other team to match them point for point. Uh, that AC Valley 4-5 matchup with Ridgeway would have that game down in Foxburg. Uh, that's huge in their favor, I, I, you would think. How do you assess what the Falcons bring to the bring to this bracket? Well, first of all, when you look at the 13-4 matchup, it's a it's a rematch of a game that was played in the AML KSAC Challenge at Dubois Central earlier in the year. Uh, AC Valley pretty much walked all over Dubois Central in that game. No reason to think that that changes this time around, especially at AC Valley. Uh, you know, you look at the Falcons, uh, another team that's deep offensively. Ryan Bartley, Brody Irwin, Jeff Eaton, uh, all three of them can score and score at will if they want to. And, and then you've got, on, on the defensive side of things, Landon Delacio is a shutdown defender. Uh, he, he, I watched him be put on roll in Shannon House and, and give Shannon House a lot of trouble a few weeks ago over at Clarion. Very talented offensively, very experienced team. Um, they looked a little nervous on Friday in the KSAC championship game, uh, which was a little bit of a surprise for a veteran team like that. But maybe they got that out of their way, and, and, and now going into the, the playoffs, they've got that experience maybe they, they didn't have before. You know, the atmosphere changed that they're used to now a little bit. Um, you know, such a hard game when you look at that 5-4 game to decide which team is better. If this was last year's Ridgeway team, I think it's not even a question. But, you know, uh, we, we look at Ridgeway, and, and they've got to play good defense. And do they have enough guys to shut down everybody that AC Valley has offensively. That's you know, the challenge. You know, in the, in the past when they talk about the AML being able to shut down the KSAC, it was because the KSAC might have had one kid that was scoring for them. And it was easier to, to design a defense that only gets at one kid and shutting down one kid, where when you're looking at three or four different options that a team has, it becomes a lot more difficult as a coach to come up with a game plan to shut everybody down. So I think that... It's easy to point to history and be like, well, the AML has played great defense and the KSAC hasn't, and that's going to be the case this year. But I don't think that that takes into consideration the types of players on each of the teams at times. And I think that gets overlooked in the whole discussion between the two conferences and what they do and what they don't do. Yeah, and that's, that's obviously a theme here. You know, what conference does good? KSAC hasn't won a Class A title since 03. Does it change this year? It's going to be fun to watch. Uh, moving to the bottom of that bracket, Smithport, Class AA champs mm -hmm. last year. They have enough back this year to obviously beat Johnsonburg. Mm -hmm. uh, they lost to Ridgeway. Those are their, uh, that they don't, that's their only loss, the loss to Ridgeway. They sit in the two seed, have a first round bye. They get to play the winner of the Cameron County Clarion Limestone game, the 7 10 matchup. Andy, how good is this Hubbard's team? <laughs> Rich, they're very good. And it starts with Zach Smith, the 6 4 senior forward. I know Chris talked about Ryan Wilson maybe being the best player in the district. Ryan Wilson, great player. Zach Smith 
in my opinion, is the best player in district. Now, you're talking about a kid who can do it all. He can isolate. He can go one-on-one. -on -one, he can post you up. Uh, great athlete. Very good shooter. Very uh, can score at will, like we talked about with Willison and some of these other kids. And then you look at a kid like Clay Schuler, who's averaging 13 points a game. But what really makes him is he is a lockdown defender. You, we touched on Ridgeway. We touched on Jesse Reynolds. Well, when they played... You know, they did hand Smithport their only loss, but Clay Schuler held Jesse Reynolds scoreless in the first half of that game. I, I think he finished with seven or eight, but okay. you're talking about a team with nice balance there with Smith and with Schuler and some of the other kids, too, might not get some of the pub. But they're, they're very well-rounded with a Ryan Corbett, a Dylan Mott, a Ryan Stratton, kids that are good athletes and can really lock you up on the defensive side of the ball. Red flag in the seven seed. We saw we saw where Cameron County went down to Red Bank Valley Friday night uh, this past uh, week and played a non-league game against Red Bank Valley. Were they motivated? I don't know. Is is Red Bank you know that better than Red Bank beat a seven and fifteen Red Bank beat Cameron County, the runner up in the North Tier. That's the big red flag here. Red Bank obviously didn't have a five hundred season and knocks Cameron to the seven seed and it kind of jostled those pairings around to where Johnsonburg and Elk. We'll get to that might have to play in the quarterfinals. This Red Raiders team at home against CL, we'll get Chris's perspective from the CL angle. What's your, what do you see from the Cameron County angle, especially coming off that loss against Red Bank Valley in, in the first round here? Well, you're right. It absolutely raises a red flag, you know, going down to Red Bank and losing. Were they motivated? Were they not? You know, it doesn't matter. The fact is, you know, that kind of stagnates your momentum hitting the playoffs. But looking at Cameron County, they are the home team. And it really starts and ends with their two big guys underneath. The 6'5", sophomore Nate Sestina, and 6'4", senior Tyler Whitfield, doing over 80% of the scoring for that team. I believe Sestina averages a double-double. How they play will determine how this team goes. Um, I don't believe any of their guards are averaging over six points a game. But you're talking about two kids underneath. Maybe no one else in this bracket presents the type of size problem that Cameron County does. Uh, Chris, their matchup against the 10 seed CL, and you even mentioned them at the beginning of the of this Class A section, uh, very uh, intriguing team going into postseason. Joe Ferguson has his team playing very good ball. Eight out of their last nine, they've won, and they have a returning all district player. That's a pretty good start. Uh, you have to remember they lost four starters from last year. R.J. Legan, the sophomore, who's the district's fifth leading scorer, the only returning player from the starting role from them last year. It took them a while to to adjust and to get the right mix of kids going and everything. But as you mentioned. Eight out of nine wins over Clarion, win over Cranberry. Yeah. Uh, you know they're they're playing very well against good competition, and uh, have the type of player in R.J. Legand who can carry a team to a title all the way, even out of a ten spot. And uh, that's what makes them intriguing to me. Doesn't mean they're going to win it. Doesn't even mean they're going to beat Cameron County. But very intriguing team the way they're playing right now. Let's move to the bottom half of this 14-team bracket. The three-seed Johnsonburg Rams host Union, the 14-seed. Union comes in at 10 and 12. Johnsonburg 20 and 2. Their losses uh, to Ridgeway and Smithport. And the Rams, uh, a, lot of team, you know, a lot of people think maybe they're the best team in this bracket. Andy, what do, what do, what do you see with the Rams? Uh, I would think this game, at least the prelim round game, is a warm-up maybe for that mammoth uh, matchup mm -hmm. against Dale County. But what, how good are the Rams? Are they better than last year? They only lost one starter with, with uh, Shuley, I believe. Yeah, I think this is a better team than it was last year. You look at the dynamic backcourt, Cameron Grumley, Cole Peterson, I think that everyone kind of looked at that at the start of the season and said, okay, because of those two, th this may be the team to beat in Class A. And I've you know, the emergence of North Clary and Smithport being as good as they are, this to me is still maybe talent-wise the best team. I mean, those kids can flat-out play. They can shoot. They can take you off the dribble. And that's not even, you know, calling to attention kids like Quinn Lohr, Mitchell Holmberg, kids who would be number one options in another team, but because of the strength of that backcourt are, are relegated to third and fourth options. So to me, this, this team is as good as, if not better, than any in this field. Hmm. Uh, they play Union 10 and 12, Chris. So uh, I think we talked that this is a team that started off really bad. They struggled mightily. I saw them at the beginning of the year. They're, they they can't be the same team that they were then, or they wouldn't even have a 10 and 12 record. It's a good story to see them end, regardless of what happens here against Johnsonburg. Uh, it's been an interesting season for them. They started out bad, then won eight in a row, and then going to the playoffs having lost five in a row. So uh, who knows? They may be as bad as what you saw early in the year. They may be as good as what they were in the middle of the year. Right. Uh, not a good matchup for them. Not a good trip. Not a good matchup. 
Um, you know, they had a very good team last year that lost to L County Catholic at home in the first round. Right. Yeah, you know, they win, it's a mammoth upset. I don't think that there's any other way around that, that it's just a big upset if they win. And if they do, all the credit to Jeff Hepler and the Golden Knights for being able to do that. But it would be an upset. And right now, I, I don't see that happening. And, you know, you look at, at that other game, and it's the same way between Port Allegheny and Elk County Catholic, yeah. that 11-6 that, that game. Um, Port Allegheny, if this was football, they would be the prohibited favorites. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for them, in this case, it's basketball. And Elk is everything that Port was in, basket, uh, in football this year, but over the last 20 years. Right. Um, yeah, you know, point. and Elk is playing as good as anybody right yeah. now. Uh, you know, they, yeah, they lost to Johnsonburg in the AML title game on Saturday, but that game was tied at halftime. And frankly, I don't think anybody, Johnsonburg included, wants to see Elk County Catholic next week. Yeah, at, at, in Elk County, uh, returning to all district player Clayton Hauser, uh, I got a chance to see him a couple times. They seem like a team possessed at the end of the year, really, mm -hmm. especially against Brookfield team that gave them trouble up there during the regular season. And uh, they beat Bradford with the District 9 League title on the, on, the, on the line. They actually lost to Bradford the mm -hmm. first time at home and went to Bradford and put up a 38-point win, I believe. Andy, uh, I guess we, are we getting ahead of ourselves to, to talk and maybe preview a quarterfinal matchup between Johnsonburg and, and Elk County here? Uh, no, I don't think we're getting ahead of ourselves at all. And it's funny, you know, we talked about so much. Aaron Straub's teams just seem to know how to play at this time of year. He has them playing their best in February and into March. Uh, you talked about Clayton Hausler. You talked about Corey Huff, another kid who's come on strong. The 6'5", Brandon Schlimm. Uh, this team is playing as good as they have all season. And with, you know, with the exception, you have Johnsonburg, you have Smithport, you have North Clare. And, and we touched on the fact that they did lose to Johnsonburg again in the AML title game. But a team that not only Johnsonburg, but I don't think anyone else in this bracket wants to see because of their pedigree and because of how they're playing. And then you look at a Port Allegheny team, you know, got off to a slow start, you know, the deep run in the States in football. Uh, and the thing people don't realize, this is a very young team with, that Jason Luther has. You have, obviously, Matt Bodemer. We talked enough about him in the football portion. But, um, you know, their second leading scorer, Jordan Seafeld, is a freshman. Um, so I think Jason has done a nice job with that group, but um, they might be overmatched against the Hulk. Sure. And since this was a 13-team bracket, we will recap a little bit of what you're, what you're possibly looking at. In the top half of that bracket, you have the number one seed, North Clarion Wolves, and uh, also the four or five seed, as we previewed, would be a, a tremendous matchup in the quarterfinals. The winner of the AC Valley Ridgeway game, if that would be the case, would be in the same semifinal matchup with North Clarion. In the bottom, we have Smithport at the top of, the, of that portion, and they would most likely be waiting to see to play either Johnsonburg or Elk County. Four teams go to the state playoffs. So that semi-quarterfinal round is used, as we mentioned in the girls' side. Four teams go to states with the losers of the semifinals playing in the consolation game. And guys, just one more thing. This Class A field, and maybe project this even beyond this, regardless of who gets through, we know Lincoln Park is the, is the gorilla, you know, the big team to, to deal with in, in, the, in the West and maybe even in the state. Uh, what can a Class A team do out of this bracket at States, assuming they can get to where they can play maybe Lincoln Park at the end of the bracket in the West? Well, I think legitimately a team can hope to get to the Western Finals and hope that maybe somebody knocks off a Lincoln Park along the way in an upset, which almost happened last year, and then maybe have a shot yeah. at going to the state title game. People in District 9 might not want to hear this, but the brutal truth is District 9 is not winning another state title as long as the Philadelphia schools are allowed into the PIAA playoffs, which they have been since Elk won its championship in 2005, 2006. 2006. 2006. Um, Lincoln Park was 30 points better than Ridgeway last year. Lincoln Park was 20 points worse than the team from Philadelphia last year. Do the math. Uh, it's, it's not a good matchup um, in terms of winning a state title. I think the best that a team can hope for is a, is a trip to the state championship game. I think realistically the best they can hope for is what Ridgeway did last year, which is a trip to the state semifinals. With the charter schools coming into more and more prominence in the state, as long as the current rules are set the way they are, unless there's a District 9 charter school that starts that we don't know about. Well, we it, don't, yeah, yeah, there is one, yeah. It's going, it's going to be a, a rough road ahead, and that's just the truth of it. And, and frankly, 
whoever is the District 9 third place team might want to consider just losing the consolation game and becoming the fourth place team <laughs> because their first round matchup will be the Whitfield champion. And you got to really wonder about that, guys, for a second. Not to editorialize here, but to editorialize. District 9, you could argue, ha would be if you were if you were seeding districts and district right. champions. District 9, right. I would argue, is the number two team coming out of the West. Obviously, the Whitfield champion being number one. How District 9's third place team then plays the best team coming out of the West? The PIAA has to start explaining how they do this. It almost looks like it's random. We're just going to pick a, pick a thing out of a hat or we're going to just go in some sort of rotation to determine this because it really doesn't make any sense to me. District 9 fourth place team, obviously, by virtue of the fact that they're the fourth place team, is worse than the third place team. They should be playing, the, if you're going to say District 9 has to play a team from the Whitfield, the Whitfield champion, it should be that team, not the District 9 third place team. Speaking to the choir, Andy, what do you think? Oh, Same there's thing? no question. <laughs> you talked about the charter schools, too, and, and the rules with kids transferring to these charter schools, and we can get into that another time, but it, it, it makes it so tough for these District 9 teams. And, and touching on what Chris said, yeah, there's no way the number three seed out of District 9 should be playing the Whitfield champion. It just, it, it creates a... Not, not that the third seed out of District 9 could not beat the Whitfield champs. That could certainly happen. But it doesn't create the fairest possible scenario for all the... You're almost punishing a team for winning a third place game in its district. Well, that's our bra that's our uh, bracket by bracket uh, review, preview. After the break, we will get into our predictions. When? Tomorrow? We can do that. <laughs> Hey, bud, that red carpet you ordered, chair. Giving you the red carpet treatment for over 40 years. Carpet Barn in Clarion. Hey there, welcome to the Roadhouse. I'm Roadhouse Rick. Come on in. Hey, how you doing? Howdy. Hey, down here. Your table's ready. Follow me. Come on in. Kick up your heels and make yourself at home at the Triple R Roadhouse in Clarion. Okay, we want a good, clean game today. No drop trays, big smiles, and medium rare is medium rare. I'd like to think I'm very rare. Well done. You go deep to table four, you slant right to the salad bar, and you get me a frosty pear from the bar. Ready? Ready? Yes. Yes. The finest steaks cooked over an open flame. We're not one of them chains. We're homegrown and locally owned. Where friends and families hang out and chow down on the best steaks, seafood, salads, burgers, wings, and much, much more. New York Strip. Delmonico, Bone-In Ribeye, Filet Mignon, Porterhouse, and the Louisiana Purchase. Cook to order every time. And here at the Red House, it's always about great food and having fun. Ribs, 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 ribs. Before or after dinner, we have bottles or drafts. And with the best mixed drinks around, we were voted best bar. Sweet potato. Mmm, triple R veggies. Sweet. And we can take the roadhouse on the road. Our catering is smoking hot. Made to order meat and potatoes cooked to perfection. I like that fling sizzle thing. The Triple R Roadhouse in Clarion. Are you hungry yet? Come on down. Great food, great service, and a warm, friendly atmosphere. You can't miss us. We're right smack dab in the middle of the Clarion Mall on Route 68, just off Interstate 80 at Exit 62. For more information, call 814-227-2000 or check out our menu and more at rrrroadhouse.com. R-R-R Roadhouse. Roadhouse. wrap up the inaugural District 9 Basketball Playoff Preview Show by D9Sports.com and Explore Clarion. We have predictions. We'll go class by class, guys. Triple A down to single A, girls and boys. Triple A girls. Punksy or Bradford? Let's defer that one to Andy first. Punksy or Bradford, Andy? Oh, we got to remember St. Mary's, too. And St. <laughs> St. Mary's. Apologize? Bradford. Um, they've been the best team all season. They're the most talented team in that field. I don't see a scenario in which they don't win. Chris? 
I see a scenario in which they don't win, but I don't think it's going to happen, so I'll go with Bradford as well. Okay, Bradford is the unanimous pick there. Double A, or triple A, boys, it's one or the other. I got this, I got my classification screwed up. Punxsutawney, Bradford, that's a best of three here, so this is game three. Uh, Andy, we'll start with you again. I like Bradford, and I like him in a game a lot like last year's district championship game. I think it'll be low scoring, I think Bradford wins. I think Andy's just trying to keep the people up in Bradford happy. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Punxsutawney here. I think that uh, Brandon Macuso is, after watching Bradford play good defense on him twice in a row, is going to explode in this game, and it, it's going to be the difference. A specific prediction there: Brandon Mancuso put kick or pick the click in the AAA boys final. Let's go to Double A girls. Uh, you have eight teams to pick from, Andy. Who's your pick? Uh, yeah, I gotta go with Kane. They've been the most consistent team in this field all season. Uh, you know, Dave Keel, they went toe to toe with a war very good warm team. They've gone toe to toe with Bradford. They're battle tested. I think they come out of this Bradford. Chris Cranberry's defending its championship. Emily Merriman, Sune Swart, inside outside presence, best guard in District Nine, and Emily Merriman. That's what wins come playoff time. The experience is there. Uh, Cranberry is going to win the championship in Double A girls. Okay, we'll stay with Chris on Double A boys. Three teams: Brockway, Keystone, or Cranberry. It's playoff time. At playoff time, I never bet against the Greg Heath coach team, Keystone. Andy, my thoughts exactly. I have Keystone winning Double A boys as well. Okay, top seed not winning the title. Uh, Class A girls. Eight teams to pick from here. Um, Andy, we'll go with you. Yeah, this might be the toughest one for me to pick. I, I hesitated on that. And I think with the injuries to Keystone, I think Clarion is the favorite in this field, and I think they win. We touched on the multiple scoring options, the tough, scrappy defense. I think in a very even field, they get the job done as the top seed. Agree or disagree, Chris? I agree. I think it's finally Clarion's time. Uh, you know, they've been knocking on the door, knocking on the door. I think the door opens this year for them. 1992, the Lady, the Lady Cats last district title. Class A boys, might want to say the best for last, the most intriguing for last, or at the very least. Um, we'll give it to Andy, let, let Chris uh, defy your pick. Uh, <laughs> Class A boys, who, who you got? Well, I mean, there are obviously a lot of very good teams in this field, and this could go a number of different ways. I think the best, most balanced, most dominant team all season has been Johnsonburg. I love their guard play. You know, I love their balance. I love their defense. I think they get the job done in a very exciting and very competitive Class A field. Concur or disagree? No different than Double A. It's playoff time. Elk County Catholic's playing as well as anybody. They were tied with Johnsonburg at halftime. I think that they're going to make the adjustments that are needed. They're going to win that game. They're going to win the district title. No, they're going to come out of nowhere to win the district title. Because I don't think anybody at the beginning of January would have even thought about Elk County Catholic winning the district title. But I think that... Right now, Aaron's job's got them playing well. They saw what their deficiencies were against the top team in Johnsonburg. They fixed those deficiencies. They win that game, and then they go on and win the whole thing. Chris is very uh, very solid with his uh, conviction on his picks. Well, there you have it. There's our predictions. There's our preview. There's just about everything you want to know about the District 9 basketball playoffs. The inaugural D9 Sports Explorer Clarion District 9 basketball playoff preview show has been brought to you by the Laurel Eye Clinic, Swift Kennedy, the Roadhouse, All-American HQ, Bauer Truck Repair, The Carpet Barn, and Vinyl Graphics. I'm Rich Rhodes. For Andy Close and Chris Rossetti, have a good District 9 playoff.